so last time I stopped with, uh, with the argument for Poincaré duality. Um, we will do this more general anyway soon, but tomorrow now I want to actually go to the hard left shed theorem um, and its applications a little and then in, first of all I will, I will cover the classical version, well for toric varieties at least, and then um, I will go to this uh, to the left shed's version beyond positivity. I will motivate it by questions in PL topology and others. Um, but um, um, the, the, the meat of the, the, the mini course will be the proof of that. Um, okay, so one three. The hard left shed theorem. Huh? Uh, one is just the, the just the, the 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 kind of the overview without really the meat of the proofs. That's that's okay. one for one. So hard left shades and company. Um, so um, let's do the classical version first. So last time we discussed sigma in the case of um, it being the boundary of a uh, simplicial polytope. And let me fix the dimension. So P is a simplicial D minus one polytope, uh, sorry, D polytope. So that the sphere is of dimension D minus one. All right. Um, and then we consider this algebra um, a of sigma, all right? We consider algebra A of sigma. And there were two ways to define it that were isomorphic. So there was a way of thinking about this as the algebra of cone-wise polynomials um, modulo or the idea generated by the global linear functions. And then there was a, uh, the, the, this face ring way of, of taking a polynomial, just the, the, the free polynomial ring, and then taking some quotient. And somehow, now it's good to remember the definition as um, um, a ring of convex polynomials because I want to, want to consider, consider um, this ring and I consider L in A1, so I give one, one function, so this is just a, a function that is cone-wise linear, right? So it's linear on every cone of sigma and this should be convex. And let me say, okay, so um, the, let me say strictly convex and explain what I mean because uh, the convex geometers in the audience might protest a little uh, because this is not strictly convex in the convex geometry sense. So let's say I have my, um, I have my sphere sigma, right? And I see it as a fan. And what I want is the function to be, well, convex linear convex and the domains of linearity should be exactly the cones of the fan. All right, so um, this, I could draw the level set at one, and this would be an example of such a function. And um, this, all right, in red now, would not be an example because it is not strictly convex here, right? So this, the domain of linearity is just larger than the domain of linearity that I really want. What does the drawing mean? So this, this is a fan, okay? I think of it, right? So, so I told you, think of it for the moment as the functions, convex polynomials on the fan. So um, now what I draw is a level set at one of the function. The function's positive outside of zero. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I can always assume it because, yeah, uh, well, I, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, I take out the global linear functions, I can always assume that it is somehow that it is positive everywhere, and now I take the level set at one. Okay? By the way, the notation from last time, you had a, a ring, some ring, which was of some dimension, and then you, you made a zero-dimensional ring by dividing by... Yeah. And so this is the full one, this A sigma is the one... No, 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 it's a finite dimensional ring. Is it a finite? No, 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 this is a finite dimension. This is a quotient. Yeah, but okay. it secretly depends on some free parameters, which... Yes, 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 but I'm not mentioning them for now, right? So I'm thinking about this. So here I have already the simplicial polytope, And as I said, if I, 
If I have a polytope, then I have already the vertex coordinates, which give me the linear system. All right. Um, right. This was, I mean, here, if I think of it as a, the, the algebra of complex polynomials, I implicitly already have the linear system. All right. I took, so here, for here, think of this here again as P of sigma modulo the ideal of global polynomials. Global linear functions, sorry. The, yeah, I mean the global polynomials also. But uh, um, this is the idea generated by the global linear functions. So, and P of sigma, yeah, this was the Cohn-wise polynomial functions. Polynomial functions. Okay? This was a question. General enough. Okay. For, 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 the, for the moment, this is general enough. So, is there enough to make the question final dimension? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Remember... Okay, because you have to check on each... Uh, okay. Yes, yes. It's exactly this condition that each of these cones here is full dimensional, right? Each of these, each of these simplices fill, spans a, a cone. So, each k minus one simplex spans a k-dimensional cone. Yeah, you, also know, you also had this coin Macaulay that you described. Yes, but it's a sphere, right? It's coin like Macaulay. Yeah, it's, it's even Goldstein, that's right. Um, so, and I have this uh, strictly convex tip convexity. Right? This is what I drew here. So this here, this is a level set at one. And the red part is not strictly convex. So convex, but not strictly convex. Um, and the white part is. Respond to uh, ample line models. Yes, 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 yes. Um, exactly. So these are the ample line models, and if it's just convex, it's just an F. That's right. Um, then, for all k less or equal to d half, we have first the hard left shed theorem. Oh, let me call it the property. Uh, so you algebra will be over real numbers now, yeah? Um, because you put it in a real space here. Yeah? This is in a real space. If I have rational coordinates, right? If my vertices have rational coordinates, so this is over R. Yeah. That's right. So it follows from our lectures in algebraic geometry if everything is rational. Yes, but we don't even need that. We will see a, like a, a, purely, a purely convex geometric combinatorial proof of this. Okay, we will not go to the algebra at all because I want to get to theorems where we don't even have a variety anymore, um, and we will still prove the left shed. So in the end, you should, for, I mean, for this, for, for the mini course, you should forget that there is a variety because we will not use it at all. Okay? No, by the way, the projective variety in general is not is not uh, smooth. Yes, yes, it's not smooth, but we will go even further. Offer. So it doesn't really matter. What kind of property does it have instead of smoothness? Is it a but if it's a rational six, I think it will be. It's, yeah, it's rationally smooth. Or default? Yes. Or like toric or default? If it's rational, then it will be toric or default. But if it is somehow, if it's just real, right, if the polytope is just real coordinates, you don't even. I mean, there are some constructions that kind of mimic um, this in the real, uh, when you have real coordinates. So you can build things that behave like a toric variety, but. Then you lose. Um, usually, you cannot apply the, the, the classical proofs of left sheds anyway. So, we will do it anyway, purely combinatorial. Okay, Ofer? Yeah? But is there also a theory of uh, like harmonic form theory in this context that can be used to. I think there are some people. Yeah, Keller currents. Keller currents. Yeah. There's this uh, Moshe Zon manifolds. These things, there, there are things that exist in this, in this context, but it's uh, still, I mean, we will not use it. So, yeah, but this guy will pair, so I think he will keep on it in Mexico, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Um, but I mean, this leads into the wrong direction. Let me cut it off at this point. So, hard left sheds. So, all right, so this is the isomorphism between. Well, so, I mean, we already know that these spaces are isomorphic as vector spaces because we have Poincare duality. But we want to. 
realizes isomorphism by a multiplication in the ring. So L to the d minus 2k, and this is an isomorphism. By the way, there is also, I forgot now if it is true, but suppose you, you have several ampere line bundles, and you decide to, instead of... Yes, 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 mixed. Yeah, this is a mixed version of the left shed theorem. It also works. With the proofs that we, we will encounter, they immediately imply this mixed version as well. It's immediate, yeah. But let me not state it for now, okay, so... L? L is this L. Okay. So for Maxim, this is ample line bundle, right? Right. All right. Um, and the theorem does not come alone. It comes with a, a relative that is that will be, prove, will be proven um, in company with it. This is the Hodge-Riemann relations. And for this, well, I define the following quadratic form on degree k and with respect to L. And this is just, I take ak times ak, and I multiply to um, degree, well, I want, to, I want to, 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 to have a perfect pairing, so I multiply to degree d, and what do I do? Well, I take a and b, all right, and I um, send this to, well, okay, so I take the degree of a times b times l uh, to the d minus uh, 2k. All right, that's exactly what I want from the left shed theorem. And so the degree is just a, a canonical identification of this degree d component here with, um, with, the, with the reals. We will encounter this later explicitly. Um, but for, I mean, to give it an orientation, you can just say, well, okay, so you just have to say what, uh, we would just want to say what is positive and what is negative. And um, let us come to the convention that somehow uh, the degree of um, a monomial here, right, a face, a monomial of a facet is positive. And that's it. Um, and now what we want to do is, well, we want to make a non-trivial statement about this form, right? So the hard left shed just says, this will be perfect, but we want to say a little more. And this is, if we look at the primitive forms under L, AK. Like the even cohomology. Yeah. This, all of this is like taking the even cohomology of some projective yeah. variety. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, is it easy to see that the odd cohomology is zero? And the because it's like third variety. Yeah. yeah. It's third variety. It's not only coach classes. Yes. We have only coach classes. Yeah. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Only, only yeah, okay. the homology on okay. Exactly. Um, where was I? I want, yeah, I wanted to say what this is. I want to say what this is, yes. Um, so I take PLAK, and this is the kernel of the map from AK to AD minus K plus 1 of sigma induced by taking this element L, but multiplying one too far. Um, um, and so L to the D minus 2K plus one. And then how, the, how are they connected in the Hodgman relations? Well, we want this to be si then um, uh, QL, QKL um, is definite of sine minus one to the K on the subspace PK, PL, AK in AK of sigma. All right, and that's it. That's the Hodgman relations. Um, ooh, too, too, too far. Okay. Minus one to the power K. On the subspace that I defined here. This is a kernel. It should depend on on the uh, uh, kernel. Oh. Ah, just the primitive. Yeah. Uh, the, okay, not the other one. Just the this one. Okay. Yeah. 
All right, and now let's talk about some um, applications. So remember, so for cohn macaulay complexes, for delta cohn macaulay um, um, the um, the h vector. Which was. Well, it's really, you mean shallow, yeah? No, 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 for, Col for delta coin Macaulay. What does it mean, delta coin? No, coin Macaulay is property of the ring. Yeah. Ah. Well, it's. No, 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 but it's a coin Macaulay, but we had Hoster's theorem. Sorry? Right? We had Hoster's theorem. Ah, so Hoster's theorem. By Hoster's theorem, it's not. It's, you can, it's a property of the ring, but which is also a property. You can also formulate it as property, right? So, ah, over. Oh, oh, you get just. Yeah. Vectors of spheres. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, not 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 necessarily. It's a homology-wise, it's a wedge of spheres, right, with respect to the k homology. The h vector was a right, which was the dimensions of the graded components, right, of the of this ring. This was um, an m vector, right. So we had that um, that this was characterized as um, the the Hilbert functions of polynomial rings. Right? So this was just what we did last time. And now, with, res um, with this theorem, what we can say is that the following vector, so the g vector, the gi vector, which is the successive differences of the hi, hi minus hi minus 1, well, ah, it's, ah, so, so for Quinn Macaulay, it's, it's not, uh, there's no Poincare duality. Yes, so yes, yes, we don't have Poincare duality. But now we have more, right? We have the symmetry. By m vector, can you record? The m vector, this was uh, the Hibbert, uh, the, the, this was the coefficients of the Hibbert series of a polynomial ring, right? A graded commutative algebra generated in degree one, right? It's clear that now we have this inclusion here, from here to here, because this is already a graded, right? This is already a graded, this is already a polynomial ring. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And Macaulay's theorem just says that you, you can go in the other direction then. But now we can say more, right? So now we have this, so we have Poincare duality, so we have this symmetry, but we have even more, we have this Lefschet property. And what, what it says is that if I look at this vector gi, right, consisting of these successive differences, then, well, I can look at um, the g vector, right? I can look at the g vector. So it's not no longer positive yet. It's it's no longer well. It, it is up to the middle, yeah. right? Um, G vector, which is the dimension. Well, so okay. So this is the dimension for of of a i um, modulo the left shed element a i. So we, let's just, let's for simplicity for simplicity let's just define this for i less than less or equal to d half, right? And then it is positive. Um, this is an m vector, right? This, this is the implication of the hard left shed theorem. Um, what we will not do um, in this lecture, but what is also true is that there is also a reverse construction. So for every m vector that you write down like that, you can find a polytope. Ah, thank you, yes. Yes. So this, this inclusion here, this is done by Bilera and Lee. But this is a combinatorial construction that we will not spend too much time on. But if you want, I can, yeah, in the coffee break or afterwards, I can explain it. All right. So that's one application, right? Um, so, so what we're saying is for any m vector, so this, this polytope same, going to be polytope. Um, yes, for every m vector there is a there is a simplicia polytope whose g vector, right? So successive differences of these of the h vector realize it. Ah, uh -huh. yes. So this this monotonicity up to half will be even for coin Macaulay, yeah? No, 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 no. It will only be right tomorrow. We are talking about polytopes, right? We are only talking about polytopes here. Polytopes, but coin Macaulay, so it's been some more general object which you don't perceive. Well. 
what do you, yeah, so what do you mean the more general object which I don't consider? Ah, uh, yeah, okay, so here, so now we are here in this situation, we should say, here, for, for, for sigma, the boundary of a polytope, right? So this is the situation. Coin to be too strong is too weak, right? It doesn't have Poincaré dual. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Exactly. We will go. We will see that this works essentially whenever this uh, whenever this phase ring is Gorenstein. So can you detect the dimension of the polytope? So you have this uh, uh, h vector. So the dimension of the polytope can be seen from. Yes, yes, it's just the dimension of the fundamental, the degree of the fundamental class. Ah, right. okay, 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 in the, in the, in the, in the Gorenstein case. Oh. Yes, but polytops, it's always, the, in the case of polytops, we always have a sphere, okay. right? In the other variation, any ambit of the ones come from Gorenstein, it's not that we don't know. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 any m vector, but we are, somehow, by, by passing to the g vector, I lose the symmetry, right? Right, I'm only looking at the g vector up to the middle. No, for, for any m vector, you don't know the dimension. I mean, the dimension of the polytope is not. No, no, no. Okay, so if I just give you the m vector, you want to, you have to give me in addition the dimension of the polytope that you want. That's right. You have to, in addition, give me the dimension of the polytope, or you have to say, okay, the m vector goes up to some entry, and then the polytope will be of double the dimension. Right? This here only the g vector here. It only goes to up yeah. half the dimension. You remember in the one above, the stuff above that you recall, yeah. if you give an m vector yeah. in Macaulay's theorem, if you give an m vector, what is the dimension? Ah, uh, you cannot say that because coning preserves it. In Macaulay's theorem, you can always take a cone, right? So if you give an h vector, you could always take a, and you could find a simplicial complex at real, sorry, you give an m vector, find a simplicial complex, a common Macaulay simplicial complex that realizes that um, m vector as its h vector, yes. then you, you could take a cone over that and it would still be the same h vector. So uh, then you cannot recover. Just in the Gorenstein case, if you have the h vector, right, if you know that it is, uh, okay, even then you can say, okay, um, even then you can cone, but if you say it is a sphere, then it must be, then it, the, the dimension of this sphere is determined. Oh, it's the sphere property. Yeah, yeah, the coning that's a. Okay, so can you forget about when can you forget about Queen Macaulay at all? Yeah. Well, um, it plays a special role. Um, we will see later that it plays a, spe plays a special role. So, Queen Macaulay will it will remain in the background a little. So, can you change from the G vector? You have the dimension or not? The okay, so from the G vector, you, if if you give me the G vector, you have the dimension because it's just double. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. <laughs> And let me just briefly mention, um, okay, so this was an application of the hard left sheds. Let me uh, briefly mention uh, an observation. I think it goes back to Timorin, but maybe it's also um, earlier. Um, uh, the application of the Hojima relations, and this is kind of important if you, if you, if you want to go back to the log concavity. Um, that I mentioned at the start for, for, for characteristic polynomials. So we take alpha and beta, two convex elements in A1 of, um, A1 of sigma. All right. And um, yeah, let me, let me stay, let me say that. Three convex? Oh. No, it doesn't have to. It doesn't have to be for what I write. Okay, so for for the moment, let's say strictly convex. Okay, but we will see in a second that we can delete it. Um, so then you can write down. Well, okay, so let's uh, let's write down the 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 the, the Hodgman bilinear form in degree one. But let's not write it down completely. But let's just restrict to the subspace by alpha, spanned by alpha and beta. It's a two by right. So it's a two-dimensional subspace. Now you just write that down, all right? So then, um, what do I have? Well, I could. So if if I think of, so I, let let me think of beta as my beta as my L, and alpha is just another form, and then I could write down degree of alpha times beta, um, and then I have to uh, multiply with beta 
to the d minus second power or some other element. Ah, let me let me just say, okay, so L is, let me just, let me just, L is any other element, all right, d, to the d minus two. Um, and, ah, actually I want in this entry, I want, right? So, ah, I, I shouldn't have written it like this. Uh, here's my cake. So, I want to have, I want to write on the Hajima bilinear form on this two dimensional subspace. So I have the degree of alpha times beta um, times L to the d minus two. Um, and then I have, I, I, I'm stupid, alpha squared, alpha times alpha. This is degree of alpha times beta times uh, L to the d minus two. And then I have here the degree of beta times alpha times L to the d minus two. And then I have the degree of beta squared times L to the d minus two. Right, and I have this, this is the matrix that I get for the Hojima bilinear form restricted to this two by uh, this two dimensional subspace. Um, and what do I get? Well, okay, so now let's look at uh, the signature of this matrix. So the, I have one positive eigenvalue coming from degree zero, right? This is minus one to the zero, right? It's, there's one positive eigenvalue and all other eigenvalues on A1, right? So now then we consider, consider here Q L um, in degree one in which order did I write it? I, I, Q1L, right? This is the Hodgman by linear form on degree one, right? All the other, all the other eigenvalues are negative. So what happens to this matrix? What is this, what is, uh, what is the, the definite, this the signature of this matrix? Well, it's an easy argument for matrices that the, the signature, somehow the, the signature can be neither, it can be neither definite, positive definite, nor can it be negatively definite. So there's a positive eigenvalue, there's a negative eigenvalue. So meaning that in particular, if I compute the determinant of this, right, it will definitely not be definite. So the, de the determinant will be negative. So uh, what do I get? Well, I get that um, this times this, so um, degree alpha squared, and then L to the da da da, L to the d minus two um, times degree beta squared times uh, L to the d minus two. And then what else do I have? Well, I have this times this, right? So I now just compute the determinant, all right? So I have minus um, degree alpha beta L to the d minus two. And this I have squared. And this here is less or equal to zero, all right? So what does this mean? Well, if I, if I pull this to the other side of the equation, then this suspiciously looks like the alexander fenchel inequality. And it is. This is alexander fenchel All um, so you look at uh, the mixed volumes of, 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 of convex bodies. So you um, take the Minkowski sum of convex bodies. So A convex body, B convex body, and then you take some other convex bodies and compute the volume um, as, as a function of the dilation. So let's say you have, um, you have the function, um, you compute the volume of T little a, A, plus T little b, b, plus some other convex bodies, okay? And then you measure, you want to look at the coefficients here of this mixed volume, and you want to look at the mixed coefficient, right? T a times T b, which is exactly this coefficient, um, and this is larger or equal to the product of the two adjacent, so T a squared right, times T b squared. That's the point. That's Alexander Fendt. Um, I'm sorry, may I have a question? Yes? Uh, can you please explain why, why this matrix couldn't be negative definite? What if alpha and beta are both primitive? Then it's negative definite. Isn't this true? 
Um, so the Hodge-Riemann form is negative definite on, on the first primitive subspace? Yeah, this is why I assume that they are both convex. Ah, I see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, so the point is now, now that I know this inequality, I can remove strictly, right? So because the stri any any form is a any any convex form is an approximation of strictly convex forms, and then I don't no, do no longer need convex. Uh, so I don't no longer need strictly convex on the fan. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Excuse Thank me. You. Uh, also, question. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, so, Alexandro Fenchel, I think you only obtain if you use a mixed version of the hard lip sheets. Yes. I mean, I cheated here. I took the same. I, I took the same L. You're right. But I won't go there. Yes, yes, I cheated, but don't tell anyone, okay? It's, uh, um, yeah, yeah, you're right. So this is not quite the most general version. Right. Um, so, um, and that's all good and nice. So we have, we have many applications of these theorems, um, but, um, there are some questions where uh, this, this version of hart lefschetz and Hodge-Riemann is just not enough. Um, so let me, let me um, just give two of them that are interesting. The first is kind of immediate, right? I mean, so we characterize the G vectors for the boundaries of septicial polytopes. But we know by, by Hoster theorem that um, the Poincaré duality extends more generally, right? The Poincaré duality, we mentioned last time, it works for general, general triangulations of spheres, even homology spheres, right? Also, we worked now over the reals, but I could go to any other characteristic, right? So, well, does, 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 uh, does this theorem extend? Does this characterization, uh, by the way, I should say that this is due to Stanley, this observation. Does this, does this observation of Stanley extend? All right, so question one. Does Stanley extend? Does um, the G theorem extend? Well, two, okay, so let me spoiler the, the, the most general version we could do, at least for, for, for homology spheres would be, yeah, so K, so K homology spheres, for K homology spheres. We will even go more general, but tomorrow for, for the more general I have to explain a little bit, for two, two, two. Exactly. Simplicial. Triangulated, yeah, triangulated two, yeah, sorry. Two simplicial. Yes, thank you. All right, I mean, um, and this is really just one direction. The, somehow, if we prove the hart lefschet theorem, for the A-rings of simplicial homology spheres, then in particular we get this automatically because the bilera Bil lee already well, gives us the other direction. Okay, that's, that's one theorem, um, or one, one question for now. It will be a theorem in, well, I don't, I don't know whether it will be small, well, whether we get done this week, but um, probably not, but uh, uh, by the end of the Hadamard lectures, we will be done. Um, and the, the, my second favorite question in this context, um, let me start a new blackboard because it's, uh, it's, I, it's my favorite question and it's small. Um, my favorite result, um, because it's just so, I don't know, it's, it's rather beautiful. And this was the, the Grünbaum conjecture, right? So this Grünbaum problem of, we look at a simplicial complex, embed it into, R2D, um, and we assumed that for us the embedding is PL, and then we want it, right? So we want uh, the question, and as I will explain the theorem, um, it, that um, the number of, oh, let me, the number of K phases of delta is at most K plus two times the number of K minus one dimensional phases of delta. That's the theorem that we will prove. And how does this, okay, so I, we already explained how this G theorem follows from the Lefschetz property. Um, how does this follow? Well, so to start with, let us, um, instead of just embedding it into 
um, R2K, we could also embed it into S2K, obviously, right? We could just compactify. Um, what we also could do, instead of like just embedding it into S2K, we could just think of delta as a subcomplex of sigma, a triangulation, uh, a triangulated S2K. Right? And this is the only case where we, the only point where we use a PLness to extend delta to uh, a triangulation of the sphere. And then what we can do is, um, well, we can play around with the numbers a little. So let me um, see what, what was the oldest part. So go here. Uh, so you mean that each simplex is kind of sum of simplices and triangulations, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, 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 wait, 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 wait. You don't want the sum of simplices. No, this no, is really. Piece so each simplex is already broken, yeah? No, 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 but here in this, thinking of this as a triangulation, all right. This, there's a simplicial, there's a simplicial complex, yeah. all right, that contains delta as a subcomplex. Why so? Because it's uh, uh, You have to. Yeah, there is a there is an argument that you can make for PL embeddings. Um, that is, for instance, I mean, it's it's written down in Bing's. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's I mean, it's not it's not obvious, but it's also not too smart. It's yeah. It's written down in Bing's note on 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 uh, three manifolds, for instance. Yeah. On, I think it's called topology of three manifolds um, and Poincaré conjecture, something like that. Um, maybe, Johanna, can you look up whatever I cite in the... I will, I will, I will leave it for the moment. It's an old thing. No, 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 it's not an odd thing. Old. It's, a, it's an old thing, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's not, but it's not an odd dimensional thing. It's not something about the three sphere. Three sphere yeah. So, so, but here everything is standard, you mean? When you say triangulation of S2K, it's not anything exotic, it's just something PL equivalent to Yes, 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 that, that's the point. It's more, um, as long as you can extend it to a, to a triangulation um, of the sphere, this bound applies. But it's not obvious that you can always do that. Uh, it's being the ge geometric topology of three manifolds, well, it's 40 of the AMS. Metric. Topology of three manifolds. It's from 83. Of oh, three manifolds. Thanks. All right. Um, and so, how do I how do I go from here to here? Well, here's an observation. So let's look at we have a sigma. All right. And we have the, its quotient um, a delta, right? That's just the restriction map to delta, to the faces of delta. So we have the subjection to a delta. Actually, let me, anticipating a little, let me write it like this. All right. So here, delta was, uh, uh, what was delta? Any simplicial complex? any simplicial complex that embeds into the 2K sphere. All right, and I extended it to a triangulation. The embrasure means a simplicial complex which is really equivalent to sphere. It actually doesn't have to be. Uh, tomorrow it can be actually, I don't actually care whether this is PL equivalent. It can be, a home, it can be just, a, just a triangulation, a non-PL triangulation. In fact, I... I well, there are non PL triangulation. And I actually don't care that this sigma is, a, is, a, is, is even a homotopy sphere, right? So, this, the, the theorem here applies whenever sigma, whenever delta can be realized as a subcomplex of a homology sphere, of a K homology sphere. Uh, yeah, you need only K homology sphere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, the, 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 the original question here, it starts out by a PL embedding, right? Into R2K. So, I have this subjection, that's good. And now I can, I can look at the dimensions of the graded components and try to, I can try to bound them a little. So for instance, I could look at um, the degree k component of delta. And well, let me try to give a, let me try to give a generating system, right? That always embed, this always estimates things from above. So I, I try to give a generating system. So, well, what better than the cardinality k faces? So, 
This is at most the, the number of cardinality k or dimension k minus one faces of delta. All right. Um, and right somehow, if I if I estimate something from above using the number of generators, I can do a similar thing uh, for an estimate from below. Right. I can I can just take the generators and then estimate the number of relations. Um, so let me do this in a specific dimension. So the dimension of a k plus one of delta. All right. So I write down the number of generators. So the cardinality k faces of delta. And then I have to work a little and think a little about the number of relations that come in. Right. So if I if I was talking about torque varieties, now I would look at rational equivalence equal to zero. Right. Um, and okay. So this takes a little thought. So maybe we'll um, somehow. We will later see a model of this ring where it is kind of obvious, but for now, let me just say that this is k plus 1 times the number of faces of delta. So for every, for every, um, for every cardinality k phase, right, it's a ring condition, right, it comes from one degree below, um, I get k plus 1. Yeah, but you divide by, when you divide, you construct a of sigma. Yeah. You divide the ring of sigma, which is in dimension 2k, by. You have to divide by linear form, by, mm -hmm. but the number of them is a dimension, is the, is something like 2k. Or 2K. Yes, yes, but I mean, so there are some there are some elements that just take out the the, the square full terms, right? Some other, the monomials. Some I, I restrict them some. I, I, I will take out some elements, right? So some monomials that are that, co that contain squares, right? That are not square free. So the first, if you think about it, if I am looking now at the cardinality, uh, the cardinality k plus one faces. So the first k plus one linear forms, they will just kill off. They will oh, sorry, the first k linear forms, they will just kill off square full terms, right? They, they will all, they they will just they will just affect. Um, um, Terms, uh, some other, they, they will kill off uh, the, the, the monomials in my ring, they are square full. And then only, only after that do I get, um, do I do the, do the square, do, do are the square free terms affected? That is the intuition what is happening. Right? It's a free polynomial ring, so it has a lot of square full terms, right, initially. But square full mean, meaning here, not square free. I don't know whether this is a standard terminology. But, uh, and don't, only after then, um, I will take out the square free. I will, we will go later to a model where it is obvious, okay? Yeah, but of course you have to justify it rigorously by saying that... Yes, yes. But the, the trick is here, we will later see a model where it is obvious, okay? We will go to the Ishida complex and then it will be obvious. Um, doing it in this model is kind of tedious. Omit? Here you're working in the situation where you don't have linear form, so you have to take out uh, the other portion where it is generic uh, linear form, yeah? Um, yes, 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 yes. I'm, I'm, I'm still working with A, right? So, yeah, that's right. It doesn't have to be generic. Yeah. And, uh, and so here, is it in this situation, also the ring in each degree is generated by score three. Uh, yes, yes, yes. It's actually I cheated a little, right? I didn't say that it's generated by square three, but tomorrow, tomorrow, because. Um, a is generated, right, uh, as a k vector space by the square free elements. But we didn't actually do that yet. You're right. Ah, okay. This is, this is not clear. You, have, you can choose the linear form to begin with. No, no, no. As long as the square, uh, as long as the linear forms um, reduce some of the dimension to zero, the, the reduce the cool dimension, the cool dimension to zero. This is true. The, the ring will be generated by square free elements as, as, a, as a k vector space. Ah, okay. This is some again non trivial. Okay. Yes, but again, instead of. Right, this was some of the overview, the introduction section. So instead of explaining this now, we will later see a model where it is obvious. Okay, so we will introduce another model for this ring, and there it will be obvious. For now, take it as a mystery, um, but later we will see it in detail. Okay, Ofer? Okay. okay. I mean, we're still hiding the subtlety of the dimension and the number of the hidden thetas that we're depending on. 
Right. No, yeah. Usually we assume that we have the same number as dimension, and here we don't. So if we um, don't remember that we're using the same data for both, and so we have more than yeah. we're used to for it. For yeah, that's right, that's right, that's right. That's right. So, right, somehow the number of thetas, so the length of the system of, of thetas um, is the cool dimension of k sigma, which is, in general, right, this will be larger than the cool dimension. Of, um, of uh, k delta. All right. And the stuff about generated by hmm? by square three is for any embedding of uh, de of something delta to a to a homology sphere or something like this. Or it's, it's any time you have any delta and you take out the linear system of parameters. So you take out enough linear forms to make this to make the cold dimension zero. It will be generated by square three. Okay, we will see it. Okay, we will. Uh, uh, we're getting distracted from this uh, from the application because now you see, now the inequality becomes even nicer. Right, this inequality was already already very nice, but what I now have to show is just that the dimension of the k graded component of delta is larger equal to the dimension of the k plus one graded component of delta. Right. And now why do I do this? Well, this is the reason that I wrote things like this. So I have, um, well, I have an isomorphism between degree k and degree k plus 1 of sigma. They are Poincaré dual, right? The spheres of dimension 2k, so the fundamental class lives in degree 2k plus 1. But if I have the Lefschetz property, so if Lefschetz is true, if Lefschetz property applies, is true, um, then what I can do, well, I can look at the following quotients. So ak of delta, ak plus 1 of delta, right? And then I have, above here, I have the, on top here, I have the left shed element. And then, of course, I have the induced map here. But this will be an isomorphism if I have the left shed property. These are surjections by construction. So this here will be a surjection. OK? So this here. So this here will be subjective, implies this subjective, which implies this inequality, which then implies my desired inequality. Yeah, that's it. All right. And now let me um, let me go to. The theorem, and let me use the big block for that. Um, so the argument works in degree less than uh, um, There is a similar argument for 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 um, uh, degrees uh, less than strictly less than d over two, right? So now we are at the middle, but somehow the middle is the most interesting inequality in the, in the end, at least for me, because the the, inter the intersections, if they exist, right? If delta is so dense. We expect some of transversal intersections. Oh, oh, wait, wait. You only get that very large complex with a symplectic equality, yeah? Yeah. Is it some kind of, because it should be some kind of tight object, like yeah. for graphs in, in plane will be generalizations, yeah, it will be some kind of special. Um, yeah, but the maximal objects are really tr tricky to understand in higher dimensions. I mean, you can you can always, you have, you have edges that you can, um, so here's a here's the issue that you can that you can that you run into in higher dimensions. So if you start with a graph in R4, right, then you could ask, well, how many, how many, how many two-dimensional faces could I add, or how do I embed it optimally? And in general, this does not really exist. Um, what is I mean, there is, I mean, as I said, you can if there is an isomorphism here, then you extend to a triangulation in a nice way, in a certain sense, in a um, but otherwise. That is not true, right? All right. Um, so here's the theorem that we 
um, the proof. And um, there's um, um, two versions that I will, so the, 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 the proof of the hard left sheds, um, um, the, the, th the hard left sheds theorem has two proofs, um, one from 2018, and then we have recently another one um, together with Papadakis and uh, Petrotu. Um, and this is 21. Um, that um, gives a slightly different flavor of, um, of, um, of, it gives a slightly different flavor of argument that nevertheless relies on the same intuition and the same, on the same uh, basic idea that I will explain. So we have, we start with sigma uh, K homology sphere. And this here for me is really just, okay, so once again, so this is a K homology manifold, right? Such that it globally also has a homology of a sphere. So it's really just, if you want to think about it, Gorenstein, Gorenstein, um, I think it's Gorenstein star, so the, dimen the dimension of the complex is the same as, um, or the, 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 the cardinality of the maximal simplex is the same as the, the, the degree of the fundamental class. So, Cardinality, um, or let's just say, dimension of the, of the complex um, is the same as the degree of the fundamental class. Class minus one, all right? Um, and then the statement is as follows. So we have a sigma. Right, a sigma. Um, specifically, it came it, it came with a with a linear system theta, right? So this here was um, a linear system of parameters. And what I can now do, I can look at the moduli space of these a of these a sigma, right? I can I can vary the theta, right? There's, there are many choices for the theta, and so what I take is a generic theta. For generic theta. Okay, and then once I took generic theta, I took a, I take a generic L in A1, generic A1 of sigma, generic. And then we have the following um, theorem. Well, the first thing is the hard left shed theorem. Yeah, there's an yeah, there's an open dense set of linear forms theta, all right, that I can take. That's the point. Yes. And the generic theta and L means the generic in the set of pairs theta L, or generic yeah. cross generic. Yeah, yeah. Generic in the pairs. Yeah, yeah. Generic cross in the pairs. Yes. Um. Oh, hard left sheds. All right, so now I have um, AK, ah, um, then for all, then for K less or equal to D half, um, ah, I should have said of dimension, of dimension D minus one, um, I have the isomorphism between degree K and degree D minus K, um, um, induced by um, induced by the multiplication with L L to the d minus two k, and this is an isomorphism. Um, and that is somehow the that's the analog of the hard left sheds. And again, so the, the classical of Leschetz, it came with this cousin of Hodgeman relations. And it also, also this version does come with a cousin um, that equally concerns this bilinear form, K 
Q, but in a different way. And there are two versions. Um, so here is the 18 version. Um, what it says is that I look at Q um, QKL, right? This was from AK times AK to AD, right? As before, it's the same bilinear form. And now what I do is I restrict to certain subspaces. It's basically, I, 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 I basically restrict to the torus equivalent uh, invariant subspaces um, if I want to think about this in a toric geometry, um, or if I if I want to think about this. Just in terms of the ring, then I'm saying that this per this form here is perfect when restricted to any um, square free monomial ideal. So I can no longer say anything about the signature, right? Hodge Riemann said something about the signature on certain subspaces. I no longer have any, any handle about uh, the, the signature in any way or form here. Um, but I say, OK, so this form at least doesn't degenerate at many subspaces. And subspace is specifically motivated by the combinatorics. OK? Yes, Maxim? No, again, this is square form. I built something largely recently. One suspect case less than one. So these are these are just the ideals. What do you mean these two ideals? Um, I take a I take a subcomplex delta of sigma, and I take the kernel of the restriction map. These are the ideals I'm looking at. Yeah. Of course, you have to. Yeah, I mean, to, for this statement to be non-trivial, they have to witness something. Um, they will have to witness something from the low degrees. That's right. It's from the K, from the degree k less or equal to L. Yeah. And that's that's the um, statement number one. Um, and huh? Ah, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ofer? Ah, okay. This means there is some subcomplex delta. Okay. No, no, no. no. For, take any subcomplex. Yeah. Okay. So, for any idea of this form. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, may I ask a question? And regarding regarding the signature of this pairing, do you have some counterexamples or you just don't know how it behaves? Um, in general, there's, okay, so you can give examples where the signature, where you just have no chance uh, of getting the right signature. Notice that this does not even depend on L, right? So if I have um, a sphere of odd dimension, right, so let's say 2k minus 1, the fundamental class is in degree k, so it's just the Poincaré pairing on degree k. And already the Poincaré pairing in gen for, 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 for general linear system of parameters just has a wrong signature. I mean, you can even, I mean, even for a one dimensional sphere, you can show that there are linear systems of parameters where you don't have a signature of one positive eigenvalue and all the re remaining ones negative. So a signature of plus, minus, 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 right? Um, yeah. Obit? Just uh, confirm this. So, is it true that, I mean, uh, of course, this, this, the signature, I guess, depends on the choice of the linear system? Yeah. yeah. Do you get the composition of the space of uh, this linear system into complex regions, or in each region the signature remains valid? Is, is there any geometry uh, in this modular space which is going up? Uh, there's a geometry in this modular space where I control the. I mean, I don't think I don't think it's so easy to understand the geometry of this modular space. So in particular, there's more the left shed's locus, if you want, right? The space of theta and L where you get left shed's. We just know. I mean, the proofs just give it for generic. 
we will see why, but I mean, I don't have any control of it. Okay, so then yeah. okay, so you don't have this in the composition because it's generated. No, no, I don't think we have a, I don't think, um, yeah, I don't know whether this is feasible. All right, um, let me state the, um, let me state the, the, some of this, this new version and let me, in the interest of, of, of saving a little time, let me actually um, just uh, state the characteristic two version. And this came, comes from, so this is the version of A18. So now we go to the paper by Papadokis and Petrotu in 20. And then it's more general version P21. And I will just state the characteristic two version. Um, so if the characteristic of K is two, then there exists a field extension K tilde of K such that um, Q um, K, so now I take the, so well, and then I take theta um, theta in K over K over over this field extension, and um, I take um, L also in, in this field extension. All right, so I really just take a nice transcendental field extension in the end, such that Q um, Q Q K L. Right, so I, I, there I said it doesn't degenerate on monomial ideals, and now I'm saying it never degenerates, even if you just take any somehow any linear form. Oh, sorry, any, any, any degree k element multiplied with itself in this, uh, in this form q, the result will be not zero, okay? Never degenerates. Never degenerates. And this is, yeah, so the q, k, l, alpha, alpha will not be zero. For all. Defined over the original field, you mean? Um, alpha defined, no, alpha, alpha defined over the also the larger field. Okay? So, right, so this is now, I should maybe say, so now we are looking at A tilde to make clear that we are in the larger field. Okay, so A tilde just says, okay, so we have A sigma and theta, but all, everything is now over the larger field. Okay? And this will never be zero for all alpha in A tilde. Not zero, yeah. Uh, alpha. Ah, yes, yes. So for alpha, for alpha in um, a sigma, they are not zero. That's right. All right. Um, and these are the two versions. Um, I think now is a good time for a short break. All right, because now we will go somehow. That's that's uh, the end of the statements of the theorems. Um, if we want to go to. All right. So now we will go a little to some homological tools, some ba very basic homological tools. Um, and this will be called section on the partition complex. I started feeling kind of naked without a mask, but it's on. <laughs> so start, okay, partition complex and um, Poincaré duality, or if you prefer Gorenstein, so Gorenstein property, Gore duality. Okay, um, and this will have two sections. Um, so we will do two one uh, the works, and then we will do two one two two the cheats, so, um, so once we will go, well, I mean, we will explain why, why certain, why certain algebras are Poincaré duality algebras in this context, in particular for spheres in general, we'll explain it a little, just because it will, we will encounter a tool that is just useful in, in, in all kinds of contexts also, also later, 
And then we will see that, um, well, if you're just interested in Poincaré duality, there's a cheap way to always get it for, near, for any simplicial cycle. Um, so let's, let's start with the works. Um, yeah. Work hard and then party hard. Um, so, how do I prove Poincaré duality? All right, so now, um, in a polynomial ring, right? I mean, I mean, how would I prove that? How would uh, how would you prove that um, a sigma, right? So a polynomial ring is a Poincaré duality algebra. Poincaré duality algebra. Well, I mean, here's the thing. It is equivalent, so Poincaré, in this, in this ring generated in degree one, is equivalent to saying that the Sokol is of dimension Sokol. Um, so the Sokol is, um, is all those elements that are annihilated by every element in the, in the, of, 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 of positive degree. So whenever you multiply with everything, anything of, of, of degree um, at least one, you get 10 to zero. So the Sokol of the algebra should be of dimension, um, of dimension one. All right, so there's just one element that gets killed with under any multiplication that is not the, just a constant. Right? Just, it's just not, not just a, uh, not just a, uh, a multiplication with a, uh, with a scalar. Um, all right, so, and this is kind of obvious if you think about it, right? What does it say, right? So, I mean, in this direction, it is obvious because Right, what does Poincaré duality algebra state? Well, I mean, it says that every element um, of degree k that is not the maximal degree, I can multiply with some non with some element of um, of another de higher degree, such that um, I end up in degree d, and I'm, I am non-trivial. All right. All right. So because this pairing is perfect, that's just it. I mean, and the other direction is, well, okay, so if I, if the circle is of dimension one, then if I have some element x in degree k, then at least I can multiply with some element y um, to get x times y in degree, right, so y, because I'm generating degree one, I can say that it's, okay, so it's of degree one. So it's some element y times x in degree k plus one, and then I can uh, y prime times y times x in degree k plus two, until I am in the uh, until I am in degree D, and this gives me the perfectness of the pairing. That's it. Anyway, commutative algebra and Artinian ring is Gorenstein if and only if the circle is. Yeah, yeah, that's just what I'm saying. Yes, yeah, it's, I mean it's true. I mean, yes, it's trivial, <laughs> but um, well, sometimes people it's, well, I, sometimes people didn't re don't realize this because they think they're thinking about Poincaré duality and for manifolds, and then it's uh, yeah, you're right. It's obvious, but. Uh, you have to say the obvious thing. In the graded world, I mean, okay, you have to, to work. Okay. Um, so what do we need for, for the ingredients? Well, to, to prove Poincaré duality. Um, well, okay, so now, to prove Poincaré duality, for sigma triangulated sphere, sphere of dimension d minus one, oh, dimension d minus one, okay. and because your algebra is d dimension, hmm? You have for algebra dimension in dimension d. Yeah. Yeah, it should be dimension d minus one. The, di the simplicial, yeah, the, the dimension as a simplicial complex is always one lower because the, the, 
the the degree of the fundamental. Yes, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. We are not talking about toric varieties, and that's how I've talked. Um, so what do I need? Well, I need two ingredients. So A, um, what I need is that for all k less than d, if I look at the degree k component of my ring, well, then I want to be able to pull back to uh, one of the prime divisors. So what I need is I want to look at this map restricting to the stars of the vertices. Let me explain. I don't think I introduced what the star is yet. Um, and I want to say that this map here over all the vertices in sigma, um, that this map is an injection, is injective. All right. Wait, what you said last time is the shelling stuff. This was a, was it only a special case of this, which is coming from the boundary of the project? Yeah, yeah. This is only a special case. Now we are. This is a triangulated sphere, and for me. From now on, triangulated sphere will always k homology. This will always be a k homology sphere. Yeah. So this is this is much more general, All right? So triangulated sphere for me will now be k homology sphere always. I don't have to say it again. Yeah, yeah. The the links are all again k homology. Uh, so again, the k homology of a manifold or of a sphere. That's right. So this is a. Uh, uh, Somehow related to the links, uh, related to the. This is a zero dimension, the vertex. Mm -hmm. And A star. And the star is the. Okay, yeah. I, what, what, I didn't say what the star is. So the star of a face in a simplicial complex is defined as those faces inside my complex with the property that tau union sigma is also inside the complex. And tau is the design of sigma? No, 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 no. That would be the link, right? Ah, okay, okay. So also want the k on the right side. On the Yes, thank you. Thank you. Yes, you know. You're right. And this is that the restriction now? Yes. So for every individual, right, if I ignored this direct sum, it would be just a subjective restriction map. But now I take it all together, and then I want this to be injected. This is what? This is a, is a sigma, V is in sigma. V is a vertex. V goes over the vertices, so the zero dimensional simplices of sigma. Right? All right. And this? I want this map to be injective. Is this, uh, uh, does it follow from Poincaré? We will see. Yeah, okay, we, it follows from Poincaré duality, but we want to prove this to prove Poincaré duality. Okay. Yeah? Right. Okay. And B. B, uh, well, okay, so this is the pullback, and then what we want to say is that um, I have the star of a vertex in sigma, and I'm sitting in degree k, and then I multiply with the corresponding variable, and this will create an ideal um, inside, actually, the ring of sigma, and I want this map here to be injected as well. So these are the two properties. Oh, oh just one question. Mm -hmm. When I write this, AKF sigma depends on all linear systems, yeah? Yes. And it's true for all linear systems or for generically. Ah, okay. So for now, I, I just said what we want to prove, and this will be true. This is true. All linear systems, non linear yeah. systems This is true. This is true for all linear systems of parameters that are, well, that I mean, they have to be linear system parameters, so they have to reduce the core dimension to zero. Ah, ah sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, so it has to be a linear system of parameters. The second property for any vertex V or it's For all vertices, so for all vertices V. For all vertices V. 
And so you are over an arbitrary base field, so it's not necessarily... Yes, yes, that's it. That's a Gizim map. But again, yeah, we won't go really into, algebra, into the algebraic geometry. That's right. Mm. So let me, let me give you, let me prove B for you first because it's, because it's much easier. Um, and the trick is, okay, um, I mean, the trick is always, um, for these kind of things, um, look at it before you do the Atenian reduction. Look at it before you take out theta. Okay, so then I have a star of the vertex in sigma going to k of sigma. And, okay, so here's the multiplication by xd. And what is the co-kernel here? Well, this is the restriction map to k of sigma without v. All right. Okay. Goes to zero. I mean, okay, so this here, before I do this attenuate reduction, it's, it's, it's more or less clear that this is um, a short uh, exact sequence. All right. And now what do I do? Well, okay, so... Sigma for me was a sphere, right? Um, um, sigma without V is therefore a homology disk, it's still called Macaulay, right? And now I mod out by theta, but because it's called Macaulay, right, the, the, the linear system will be a regular system for, for, um, for, for, for sigma without V, but then the sequence stays exact, all right? Okay, so theta is regular. Well, it's not only regular here, but it's also regular here because it's a homology disk. Um, and then this is, uh, the, then I can mod out, and the, the, I get the same I, I get the same exact sequence for the a's, um, right? For a of this, but then I in particular have this injection. That's it. Yeah, and you get the regularity of on the first by by easy uh, homology Yeah, yeah, this is just yeah, just yeah, not even yeah, just a relative yeah, relative homology yeah, that's it. Um, right, it's just I mean you take a s triangulated sphere, you remove a vertex, what you have left is a disk. Don't you need one of these to be relative? No, 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 because I multiplied with xv. I saved myself the relative stuff. Okay, so that's 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 part uh, the simple part. So now for part A, we will need what um, I call the partition complex. Um, so once again, the trick is. So I will do this actually in the generality of. Um, Let's say delta is a cohen macaulay complex, okay? Delta is cohen macaulay cohen macaulay of uh, dimension d minus 1. Um, and... Um, Sorry, did I make it make it make it make it make it when you were speaking to sigma minus d, you put xv equal to 0. So, I mean, these are linear forms, you put you just... Yeah, yeah. And you did this in this far, you do the same, uh, you know, you just restrict to the same value. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is just the restriction to, I, I restrict, yeah, I quotient out by, by xv. Yeah, that's right. So, and the trick is, once again, I look at the unreduced version, k delta, and then I map to the direct sum over the vertices and delta zero, and um, take the k of the, the face ring of the star of the vertex in delta, and then next step, I go. Well, what would be more natural to than to go to the edges next, right? The edges in delta. So these are the one-dimensional faces, and then I take k of the star over the edge in delta, 
and then I go on. And you have some signs coming from... Yes, 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 you have a sign. If you think about it, well, how, do, how do you choose a sign without actually, um, well, with, with being a little lazy? Look at this in degree zero, right? Look at K, look at these rings here, but only restricted to degree zero. Then what I want is to be in degree zero is naturally the Czech complex given by covering sigma with the open stars of vertices, right? The interiors of the stars. And now I take just the Czech complex in degree zero. I have the natural choice of signs. Okay, coming from the ordering of the vertices. Yeah, well, I mean, okay, so I can order my vertices and then give the sign. That's, that's right. Um, and it turns out if I give the sign this way, then naturally this will be exact in positive degree. So, degree zero component is Czech complex. Wait again. So, Zuska, I think, Luska will frown. I think it is this, this version. Or is it? I don't know. Um, I don't remember. This axon, I think. Um, Czech complex. And in uh, degree larger than zero, this is just exact. And let's, let me call this, well, the uh, partition complex of delta. All right, there's no, no theta yet. Um, so the, uh, uh, it's like augmented chain complex, so. If you, uh, I don't know whether you want to call it augmented chain complex. In degree, degree you mean the. Uh, degree, I mean the degree of polynomials here, right? These are, these are graded rings. Okay, yeah, it's also the degree in the complex. Yeah. So the complex is concentrated in the terms of the degree of the complex. Yeah, you have to choose a convention, like you start with zero minus one. I mean, you have some convention on which degree you... <laughs> it's a homological degree. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, yeah. Yeah, there are too many degrees, that's right. Um, uh, so there, there is some more. Huh? Yeah, the polynomial degree, or, yeah, polynomial degree. You're right, thank you. And the polynomial degree. Homogeneity. Yeah, homogeneity, yeah, 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 uh, yes. So the Czech complex calculates the, the reduced cohomology of delta, yes? Um, yes, yes. So it has something in dimension d minus one. Um, yes, yeah. And only in this, okay. Um, okay, that's, 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 uh, um, my, 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 my first complex. And then, okay, so now what I do is I take the Kosul complex coming from theta, right? I take my theta. Um, let me see where I have space. Right, and this is some other kind of, uh, probably one of the first things that you ever do in uh, somehow when you do homological algebra or spectral sequences. Right, so you take, take uh, that uh, cos complex. Huh? Go from Czech language to Hungarian language, yeah. From Czech language to Hungarian language. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that, that's a, okay, that, this one I didn't know yet. Okay. <laughs> yes. Um, and now, now we marry the two. Um, so, so we take uh, p tensor, p of delta tensor, Kosul complex. Um, now we have this double complex. We take the total complex of it. Um, consider the total complex. And now what happens, right? Somehow now, I mean, so I have this, this double complex, right? Which somehow, again, this is just the direct sum of um, the ith component here um, uh, with the jth component uh, here, uh, where i plus j is equal to a given constant with a given to a given k. Um, and now, well, okay, so what do I have, right? Somehow, in the direction of this complex P, what do I have? Well, in positive homogeneity or polynomial degree, right? This is just exact, right? So I want to compute, right? Somehow, I will bore many people probably, but 
right? So if this is the direction of p and this is the direction of k, so in, in positive degree, this, this is exact, right? So positive. There are three degrees now because. Yes, in positive homogeneity degree. Right. Yes, in positive. Yes, yes, yes. It, it, this is why I don't will, will not write this down. There's too many degrees. So there is a homogeneity degree. In po positive homogeneity degree, p is exact. So we can push down until we end up in degree homogeneity degree zero. Okay. Yeah. Um, similarly, in, in in the Kozul direction, we are exact because we are called Macaulay, right? All the stars, delta is called Macaulay, all the stars of vertices are called Macaulay, the stars of edges are called Macaulay. Hence, we are exactly the Kosul direction. And I can push it, uh, I can push it into to the boundary here, right? The standard, the standard homological algebra argument. What, we, what I get is then exactly that, um, uh, and again, so there's too many exacts, um, I get that um, the desired property that A delta to the direct sum over the vertices in delta of a star of the vertex um, Right, because the homology vanishes, um, this will be exactly the Kosul the Kosul homology. Uh, sorry, not the Kosul homology. This will be just uh, the, the homology coming from the Czech complex, and this will vanish um, in degree k less than d. K less than d. Um, and this is an ejection. And now let me state um, the more general version. So if Delta is Buchsbaum. And this, this is just saying that uh, um, for all vertices, for all vertices in delta, the star of the vertex um, is, is, uh, is called Macaulay. Um, maybe do I need purity? Um, let me, add, um, maybe if it's disconnected, it's not, okay, so, so then uh, delta pure, pure and um, for all vertices in delta, the, uh, the star of the vertex is called Macaulay. Uh, then I can say something finer, then, um, uh, what I get here is that, um, well, I can look at the kernel of this map, the kernel of AK of delta to the direct sum over the vertices. Let me just not write it again, A star of the vertex in delta. And this is isomorphic to, well, the cohomology, and I should in degree K, um, the cohomology in degree k minus one um, with co with k coefficients, obviously, of delta, and then because the Kosu complex, right? I mean, uh, the Kosu complex is really implicitly um, right. If I, once I go to the homogeneity degree zero, I will have some powers of it coming from the Kosu complex, and this will be exactly the d choose kth power of this vector space. Here you explain this is about the k is at most. I mean, it should be this is the finer version. Yes, yes. So this is or refinement. Yeah. Excuse me. So why uh, why uh, this cohomology is zero in the in the case of the triangulated sphere, uh, the top. Well, but yeah, the top is not trivial. But I'm restricting to k less than d. Okay, okay. Yeah. And you take reduced cohomology. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, because again, empty set, yes. I know the empty set is kind of your thing, but uh, yes. Uh, um, all right. Okay, so let me, let me delete that one. 
And then, okay, well, okay, so what I can draw from that is I can do the analogous version of manifolds. All right, so if delta, so, or let's say if m is a closed um, orientable manifold, I know you say, okay, triangulated manifold, simplicial um, of dimension d minus one. of dimension d minus 1. Well, OK, so you will see that I will not be a Poincaré duality algebra. This a of, a of m will not be Poincaré duality algebra. But what I can do is I can look at, um, so a of m is not PDA in general. But what I can do is I can take a of, uh, I can take b of m is not, thank you, yes, I said it, but I didn't write it. But B of M, which is the quotient of A of M by this kernel here, right, by HK minus one of M to the D choose K uh, for all K, right, so I do this for all K less than uh, for all k less than uh, um, less than uh, d, this is a Poincaré duality algebra. Is and now really is a Poincaré duality algebra. All right, that's it. Um, it's an idea because of the. Well, I mean, I mean, it's it's an ideal in a trivial way because these elements here they die under any multiplication of positive degree. All right, All right. This is this here. Um, the, homo the cohomology, they, exp they, they, they are exactly the so-called elements, all right? You see that now, these actually, this here applies in every degree, but I don't want to kill the top so-called element. But all the other ones I kill, all right? I send to the graveyard. And in fact, what we prove, uh, what, I, uh, uh, what I prove is uh, that the, the left shed's theorem holds for this more general Poincaré duality, this more general Poincaré duality algebra, all right? But uh, it, it, we can do it even more general, and this is now, so this is the, 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 um, the, 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 the end of the section, the, the works, and now we go to the cheats, um, which is the final part for today. Um, um, so let me see. This one I can delete. So. Now to the cheat. The cheats. Um, let's say I take any um, any simplicial complex delta, simplicial complex um, of dimension d minus 1, and then I take mu um, in the degree d component of delta. Um, okay, I, I, I take mu in the degree d component, any, uh, um, I, I want to actually take this as a quotient, somehow, to mu, um, any one-dimensional quotient. Dimensional quotient. So it's a one-dimensional quotient, and in fact, there's something nice here, and we will see this later. Um, um, is that this here really? This is always isomorphic to the d minus first cohomology of delta. So regardless of manifold property, we will see this um, with k coefficients. Um, and then what I can do is I can always generate um, a Poincaré duality algebra from a, from a of delta, which has this as a fundamental class. Okay, so 
then b of mu um, is a maximal quotient, uh, sorry, um, sorry, it's a minimal quotient, minimal quotient um, of A of delta that, um, well, that contains, that maps, maps to non trivially to uh, such that, such that uh, B of mu in degree d is equal to mu. It's isomorphic to mu. So, okay, so I just basically force a Poincare duality algebra by, by kicking out anything that does not pair to mu, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, minimal, well, it depends, minimal or maximal. No, 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 but it's it means one. The, la the largest, co the, what well, one can say is that you have a pairing. Yeah. You have a pairing, you just, you take all the quotients which, which give this in the gray view, and, yeah. and you take the smallest, the thing you mod. Yeah, think of it like this. I, I take out, I, I look at the pairing, yeah. right? And uh, whenever an element um, goes to zero, it goes to, goes, to, goes to zero under this, right? I pair any element in degree k to degree d, and if it goes to zero under this quotient, I kick it out. That's my ideal. All right? That's clearly an ideal. Yeah, if any algebra, yeah. any linear function will get rid of it. Oh, okay. Yes, yes. minimal yes. in the sense it's really minimal. Okay. In the... Okay, okay, I understand. Actually, smallest you should... Okay. Yeah, it's maybe... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's equivalent. You know, yeah. Because you can describe it like what you said. And so... This is actually a nice object. I mean, it, it only depends on, on mu, right? So you can add faces of delta to delta that are not in mu. The algebra will be the same. Um, here's a nice way of thinking about the degree map in this context. And uh, this will be the end for today. Um, let me see. So here's the trace complex. Let me, let me finish here. Um, All right. Um, mm, all right. I, I can think of. I mean, I can look at the dual. All right. Mu v. Um, dual to mu in in the homology um, of my complex. All right. So this is just a simplicial cycle, right? Really. Special homology cycle. Um, and then what I can do, okay, okay so um, what does this give me, the simplicial homology cycle, right? I mean, okay, so implicitly I have the pairing, but I mean, well, the, the nice thing here is I can write down the degree map, and so now this really, again, the pairing degree, explicitly in terms of this mu. So then the degree, then the degree of a monomial x tau um, is um, uh, where tau is of cardinality of cardinality of, uh, yeah, so is a simplex of cardinality of cardinality um, of cardinality d and the degree of this monomial is then just mu tau um, um, divided by the determinant of the matrix. I look at theta at the matrix. I look at the main minor corresponding to tau. And here I'm explicitly, I'm, I'm orienting. So I'm, I have an order on the vertices. I mean, taking the or, or, oriented coefficient and I compute the determinant of this matrix. What is the XT? It's a monomial corresponding. Yeah, it's a, it's a monomial. So x tau. This is the product of, so x tau, this is equal to the product of the x v, where v is in tau. And the degree means that you, you look at the, it, it, in this quotient, in the, and you take the coefficient? Yes. Oh, okay, and this is equal to? That's a, the oriented coefficient 
of um, of mu in this in this uh, of 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 the phase tau in this uh, in this in this uh, homology cycle, and I divide it by the or by by the determinant of the minor in theta corresponding to tau again oriented, all right. So they are, uh, I implicitly have an order on the vertices to make this work. Yeah. The coefficient of tau in the ah okay in uh, in yeah. you and then you know it's not zero. Well, it might be zero, right? If, I, if, if there is a phase of delta that is not supported, right, that is not supported in the, in the simplicial cycle, then it will be zero, but then the degree will be zero on that phase. But what do you assume now? The delta is a simplicial complex? Delta is a simplicial complex. Mu is a homology. Mu is a cohomology cycle. Mu V is a, the, 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 the dual cohomology cycle, too. It's like a pure dimension D minus 1, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, you could, I could add phases that don't lie in the cycle, and they just don't appear in the ring. That's right. Um, so this is uh, the most general version, and then of course I can. Okay, so now you can start with a homology cycle, right? And you can start with a homology cycle that any th cycle that you want, and you can look at um, the algebras B mu theta, right? Where the A D is related to uh, what is the uh, Ah, AD. AD is always isomorphic to the cohomology. A upper D is always isomorphic to the cohomology um, in degree D, in dimension D minus 1 of the complex. All right? And um, there is also a dual model that we will encounter soon for, for the homology that works out as the same. This is exactly the Ishida complex. Um, and that is. Yeah, okay, now we can look at, right, I, I can, you can fix a simplicial homology cycle, mu, and you can look at all these algebras, b mu theta, right? In particular, you can look at generic one, and a generic, um, a generic element of this, all right? So I take fix, fix mu, fix mu, and take a generic, in terms of in terms of the possible thetas that you could take, all right? Um, and this will satisfy the hart lefschetz theorem. Will satisfy satisfy hart lefschetz That is the most general version of the of of, of the lefschetz theorem that we have in this context. Hart lefschetz So you take generic L and so on. Yes, yes. The generic uh, small and. A generic L in, in B1. A fix view, and then what is theta? Well, theta is just, I mean, so you have, you have choices for theta, right? You have as many choices, I mean, you do, yeah, you It depends on three parameters. Yeah, linear yeah. Seats, linear forms. You fix uh, some uh, theta. Yes. No, 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 you fix, uh, fix mu. Fix the simplicial homology cycle mu. And now you have an algebra, now you have many, many algebras coming from these, from, from, from modding out different systems theta. Okay, then you take theta generic enough. Yes, and this will satisfy the hart lefschetz property with respect to a generic element L and, a, uh, L and B1. So the pair, the pair uh, uh, theta L is generic. Yes. And this is uh, generic in the you are over which field now? Over any field or over? Well, I mean, any infinite field. Any infinite field. Okay, so generic in the sense of the Zariski topology. Yeah. Then the generic theta of the Zariski or the generic point even just mm -hmm. you extend the field. Is this uh, satisfied how that should be the theorem? Yes, that's a theorem. Yes. I won't write it down again now because we're already over time. But uh, we will repeat it next time. It's fine. I understand the. Okay, yeah. so one is to digest, and also it's kind of, I'm not usually thinking, but I know that uh, in toric geometry, the Ishida, what you said, you said something that August once told me about this. Uh, I don't know what August told you, but okay, we can try. <laughs> about Ishida, uh, the name. Ishida complex, yeah, I mean, there is a way to think about, yeah, we will, t we will go over this next time. 
Yeah, there was a question in the chat. Okay. And that's to submit it. Delta is a too complex in S4. Does the PL embedding have to be locally knotted to extend to a triangulation? No, if so. No, it's my, it's my, if you look at the reference of Bing, um, then any, 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 it doesn't even matter. There's not even the dimension condition that is relevant. So, um, if you have any PL embedding of a simplicial complex into the sphere, then you can extend it to a triangulation, a PL triangulation even. So it doesn't mean, it doesn't uh, depend on unknottedness. But you can write me an email and I will, if you don't remember the reference, I will send it to you again. So you first know that if you have a sufficiently fine triangulation, then you can extend. And then you want it to do it without refining the triangulation yes. on the smallest yes. stuff. Yes. So the idea is that you, you have to join with something from the outside. Yes, yeah, that's exactly the idea. You shield it off. Yes, yes, that's right. You basically look at the, the links of vertices and say, okay, by induction, I can, I can, I can do it in this, in this vertex. And then locally, you, you build like a neighborhood around it. And then outside of this neighborhood, you have whatever refinement. That's it. That's the idea. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.